some short stories of our family. And um, what's interesting to me is that uh, for younger sister, I think, has not been mentioned. We're always hurting, we're always hurting. But uh, actually, we were 14. Uh, the youngest sister died at, at birth, but she lived to, she died, anyways. And I was about uh, 16 at that time. And my dad came, mom was in a hospital. My dad came and got me from where I was working. And I thought, um, do we have any too many kids? So just good, so less. But then when I saw my father cry at the graveyard, I thought, dear, I, once, I only once saw this baby uh, in the coffin. But uh, not everybody has seen it from our brothers and sisters. So it's easy to remember how many we are. First there were five boys, and then two sisters, every night. And then there were two boys, Tony and Elwin, and then five girls. Mary and Lena, Aston, Margaret, and Anne. Okay, that's that. And uh, I, 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 I always remember what, what kids are thinking, small children. It's very interesting, very, very interesting. Once we were at our parents, I don't know who was all there, if it was the whole clan or not. But any, I remember Van, um, John Lowen's Van. He was standing by the steps, and he had big uh, doll, I don't know what they call it, cut up off. And he was biting on it. And then Elizabeth, Mano's daughter, she saw that, and she said, Pop uh, Eta. And Van said, Van said I, I'm that, I am built you. I built He thought was, he was, told him a hog leader, but he didn't, just eating, ball, uh, eating doll, eating the doll. Uh, I, I and much later when the boys were a little bigger, they, they lived a while between our place and grandparents' place. And I haven't seen this, but I always heard the story. Um, they were, the boys were home alone, alone, the parents had gone somewhere else. And they had a player which most people didn't have in those days. And they had it of course as loud as they could. And John was singing too, big open mouth. All of a sudden he could not close his mouth again. It went out of the joint somehow. And then they went to the grandparents, I think maybe just Asked her and Margaret to care of that. And then ben, Peter and Ben would come along and said, Nothing happened to John. He's just acting. Nothing happened to him. They were sure nothing had happened. But my sisters had thought something must be wrong. So at that time, a chiropractor from Mexico was at our neighbor's. So they went there and he put it back in and he. I think, I think he never sang like that again. It was Johnny. And then um, another story is Aaron knows better about it than I. Nano told me what they have thought when they were small children and then back in Canada. And my dad was an old timer. He had four big grab horses and he would plow. He would uh, work 120 acres with those big horses, three, four horsepower. And we had a big wagon, with big, those wood, old wagons with wooden wheels and a iron strip along the rim. Yeah. And uh, when those, that team, which my father drove, was that, was that wagon would go over a bridge, that would give a lot of noise. And then uh, you also know when children are pretty good off at the main top story that makes a lot of noise down there so when the as potters perform would come they would um, they they knew this was something that was 
God was doing up there. He was in a big wagon with those big brown horses, and he was running over the hammer, and he had a big hammer. Bam! So that's when now the lightning came. Bam! And then again. So um, that, that was that. And it, it was, was it's very interesting how children are thinking. And now again, so we were 14 children or family. Suppose all of we had 14 or average 14, how many would that be? 14 times 14. Now we have the next generation, if they would all have 14 by 14, it would be on and on. So you can much fill this building. But it's not a custom anymore to have as many children as possible. Fortunately, they not. And John, John was always special. He was the quickest one of our whole family. And um, he was often driving from the United States to Belize, taking loads of second-hand goods. One time he turned over. Most of the time he had accidents. He was not a good driver. And then he turned over. And while turning over, he, he remembered, a little way back, there was a, a skitter. So as soon as it stopped rolling, he ran back to that skitter because he wanted to put him back before the boil and the water ran out. So they came and put him up, and he wasn't on his way again. And one time uh, when he was driving, what he was driving, a uh, police stopped him. And he said, those Mexican police who didn't like him very much. And he said, John had a gun. No, I don't have any. You have a gun. Give me the gun. I don't have any. Give me that gun. If I had a gun, you would never anymore. <laughs> from, John, from Johnny, we know the most stories. In Mexico, we always had to travel to a mountain range to go to the city. And then, in the, after, in the rainy season, it was washing out all those, the whole trail was mostly going around the creek, or along the creek. So our community would take a truck of the boys and men to fix that wood again. So fix and shovel and they would fix it. And one time they had, um, they had a dinner. Then, well, after dinner they start wrestling. And John would like to wrestle with anybody. He was not afraid of it. But nobody. Because it was no shame. He was chapari, he was small. It was no shame if he would win. And if he win, he'd be like him. And then um, David Thiessen, Abraham Thiessen's David, he was a big boy. And uh, somehow they agreed they would wrestle. And David stood, I haven't seen it, my brother-in-law saw it. Stood there and um, he would lay this little child down. And my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law said he had thought of uh, like David and Goliath. So John was a small one and David was big. And as they met, bam, David was on the ground. And John didn't know how to hold that big, big fellow down. So he took a few rounds around him and then he dived in and held him for a little while. <laughs> I could tell stories of John for a long time. And he was um, the quickest one. And he would, um, if he threw a stone, he would sell the miss. He would hit what you might call it a slingshot. Also roping. He was the best roper in the car. The, um, like roping pigs is very difficult because the pigs are tapered. They have no neck because everything is smooth. If you if you uh, get the get the head, it slips slips all backward. If you have the head and two legs, it will go through. So you have to rope it head and one leg, then it stays. 
he could do that too, which is pretty, pretty tricky. I think that's enough for today. I have some work down. I think, I think I took enough time. Thank you very much for giving me your ears. Bye. I remember uh, one time Uncle John, I remember very little of him, but he was bragging he drove from Canada to Belize in three days. But is, is that fast? Okay. I just remember as a little boy, he, I heard him say that. I did it in three days. Okay, here's some Aaron. When Brother John did that, driving to Belize in, in three days, he picked up hitchhikers and he would let them drive and he would sleep. <laughs> so that's how he, how he managed to do it in that small amount of time. I'm going to start in Manitoba. When I was about maybe 10 years old, maybe not even that, our parents would sometimes go away for the evening. And they would take maybe the smallest child or maybe, maybe two, and I was left to sit, maybe sit with the pretty, fairly big family by then. So it was during the Second World War. And I never told my parents that I was afraid to be at home, at home alone. So I used to pull all the blinds down in the whole house. All the blinds were pulled down so that the military aircraft couldn't see our house and bomb it. So anyway, there's another th the way ch children, children think, and I was only a child, and I was looking after the, the boys and the girls, and diapering and all, and it was not really that much of a problem for me, because I did it all the time. So that's a, just a little story about, about Canada. And then uh, we moved to Mexico. I was 13 years old. I always say, and then I, I was only there for seven years, so I came back to Canada and uh, just for a visit. I was going to visit my cousins. I, I, I was missing them a lot. All of them stayed back in Manitoba. So <clears throat> then, uh, always, it sort of ran away on me. But, but anyway, uh, Mexico was was a, a very oh yeah what I was what I was going to say I spent all my teenage years in Mexico actually and nobody thought anything of it when my brother and I Manuel and myself were 15 and 16 years old, 16 years old and we would go to the bush to the mountains three quarter uh, one quarter of the 50,000 acre ranch that about 80 families bought was uh, was mountains and uh, my brother man and i thought we had the best job in the world the other farm boys they were all on the on the fields and, and doing dusty work and we were we were in the, in the mountains during the winter and the sun was shining beautifully into the canyons it was quite warm and we were, we were tending mother would send us a case of of uh, canned beans and we'd have some potatoes, we'd fry potatoes ourselves, and we'd cook porridge, and we had gruben if we were lucky. So, and the dishes, doing the dishes was very simple. We just threw the dishes in the creek, and retrieved them for the next meal. So, that was, that was the life as far as we were, we were concerned. And, and then I decided I wanted to visit my uh, my cousins in Canada. So I went back there. I was only going to stay for maybe, maybe uh, the summer and, and earn enough money to pay for my trip there. Peter Hebers uh, took me in their car. I think they only had one child. And they charged me $20, but it took me also all summer before I paid them. Uh, and then I, I, I went to First Mennonite Church 
because I was working at Christie's Biscuits uh, and George Reeve uh, took me to First Mennonite Church. And then during that summer, George Reeve asked me, would I like to see a girls' baseball game? Or church is going to play, girls are going to play uh, baseball against another church. So then I thought, oh goodness, that first base person, I, I've seen her before. And a couple of weeks later, I guess we double dated, and uh, like with George's girlfriend and, 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 and Mo Anne actually. And then I told her when she sort of called her name, that I'd seen her the first day I was in Winnipeg. And she says, no, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Well, I says, your desk was uh, to the left of the door that went to the, the, the shop, and and uh, I was only working here for three days, just, just uh, carving stock. Uh, and uh, I married the first girl I saw in Winnipeg. <laughs> As a result, my mother cried an awful lot because I didn't come back to Mexico. I stayed in Canada. And when this move to Belize was on, I sort of deliberately uh, paid for my parents' bus trip to, to come, come to visit Canada. And I wanted to convince them that they shouldn't move to Belize. And we had one, one shop where there was quite a few black people uh, in, the, in, in the window. And I said, that's the kind of people you want to be living with. Don't, don't, don't move to Mexico. But they didn't listen. And then I was, I was working with the train by that time so I could travel free on even on American trains. So I was, then I was going to visit them before they left for Mexico. But they didn't heed, uh, heed me. And uh, they, by the time I, I was time for me to go, they were, they were going, to, going to Belize. And uh, well, the next chance, my, Anne and I were married. Uh, I asked the parents permission and they said they couldn't say no. Well, they, they, they realized that, that wouldn't do any good. And uh, uh, then we went to Belize for our honeymoon. So we got to the airport, we let the, the parents know well on time how, when we would get there, but there was nobody at the airport to, 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 to meet us. So there was, there was a station wagon took us to the, the Royal George, the most hotel, most expensive hotel in, in Belize City, and uh, uh, then we didn't know how how we were going to go on from, from there. So then uh, Anne and I walked down the street in Belize City, and we went to a hardware store, and he, he, we saw this man who was, his name was Peter Madison. So I approached him, and I told him, I said, you were working at the customs, at the U.S. Customs, when I went to Canada, and uh, I'm just wondering whether we could help us. We were going to try to get to, uh, get to Spanish Lookout. So he, he called a cab for us, and he told this cab driver on no uncertain terms, that you get these people to mile so-and-so, and, -so. and uh, he, he did, of course. And then he looked at the way my wife was dressed. She had quite a, 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 a V-shaped uh, dress at the back. And he said, when you get to Spanish look like the people are going to st throw stones at you. So, well, of course, I thought, I thought that was kind of funny, but and I, was, I was the oldest in the family, and I, I would have no trouble controlling things like that. So, so now I, I've gone from, from Manitoba, when I was about eight, nine or ten years old, to, to Belize. So that's a, that's, a, that's a short story of, of the, the uh, three countries I, I've been to a lot. And it's a, real pleasure, it's a real pleasure to be here. I didn't think I was going to be able to be here because I really wrenched my back about a month ago. But then it, it healed well enough and there was nothing broken. Uh, that I, Cal, uh, Cal, my nurse daughter, thought thought uh, it was maybe not too risky to take me to take me to Belize. So that's that's why I'm here, and I'm really enjoying it. And thank you for listening. Thank. You.
Thank you, Uncle Aaron. Is there anybody else from the uncles and aunts that would like to to uh, say something? I uh, I have a question for Uncle Peter to see if my mom is correct. Can you? My, I, have a, I said I had a question for you. My mom told me a story that you and her loved uh, uh, whipped cream. And without permission, one Sunday morning when you were young, uh, you were a young boy, she was a, a young girl, you secretly made a big bowl of whipped cream and you ate it all. And it took a long time for you to like whipped cream again. Is that a true story? Yes. Just I, I and A was home. And we, and we would we make a lot of ice cream, and we want to not, not over because the the parents shouldn't know that we eat ice cream, so we eat, eat it all, and that that uh, take many years that that I eat ice cream again. <laughs> okay, so I had a little part of the story wrong. I thought it was whipped cream, but ice cream uh, that would make sense too. Anyway, if I remember right. She, uh, my mom said it had taken many years for you. I would like to ask you, do you like ice cream now? Yeah. Okay, by now he's liking it again. Anybody else from the uh, uncles and aunts? I will tell you I'll never jungle story. I've always been working with logs. But then one day I went to the mountain pioneers to take care of my workers. And I had to climb a hill on a dry day. I had to grab it to 35 miles north, 35 miles in front an hour. It would have been first year, otherwise the pickup couldn't have climbed that hill. And then, of course, it had then had rain. They had to walk. And all of a sudden they heard, heard a very, very heavy noise. What is this? I walked slowly forward, walked slowly forward. All of a sudden there was a big jaguar and right in front of me. And I was taught you have to stare them down. Who blinks the eye is the loser. So then, okay, I stood there and stared and stared and stared. He stared at me. I was th thinking, how long shall this take now? Should, should it just stay there for, I don't know, for how many hours? Then if I decided he's far enough away, maybe 100 feet, I could still look where our big leaves, because my worker told me, if you get, get big leaves together and clap them together, then they will run away. So I quickly look back and stare him again. So then, then I walked, then he ran away, then he had to follow him. The way he ran, or run around, around our sharp corner. Then there were tracks, very big tracks, and half set tracks, and baby tracks. Then I was more afraid, but I still, still didn't give up. I went to see my workers, and for over a mile, those tracks were on that road, or just full of tracks. So it was a quite extreme experience. Thank you, Uncle Alvin. Now, if there's uh, any of the uh, cousins, or the older cousins, I want to say something. If the uncle and aunts uh, have said what they want to say, uh, I can pass it on to some of the other ones that want to say something. Uh, I know there's a few. Yes, there will be tomorrow afternoon, there will be another chance. I will uh, what from Uncle uh, Abe Reda. He, uh, he, I learned a very valuable lesson from Uncle Abe shortly after we moved to Belize. He, um, 
I gather that he did not enjoy working with cattle, but I got a chance to go to Hingelbacher one time with him. And, um, and then sure enough, he got the cattle into the crowd, and there was one steer that had a sore. So of course you have to treat that. And so we, we tried to rope that steer. It was a pretty wild one. It took us forever to get that steer. And um, finally he said, well, you try. And I had never, never roped an animal before, but I tried for quite a while and I couldn't get him either. And then he tried again. And then finally um, he, uh, he said, I'm going to throw 15 more times. And then if I can't get it then, then we're just going to go home without, without treating this animal because it's just, he was getting frustrated and, and it just wouldn't work. On the 15th throw, he got the steer. And then, uh, and then he, um, and then we had a hard time getting him too close to the fence or, or to tie him on. So we worked another hour, two hours, I don't know how long, trying to get that animal down to treat him. And he already was just trying to get the rope off of him because we, you know, because <laughs> we were just, it was just not working. And uh, the lesson I learned was, shortly after that, I heard that Abe had decided not to go, not work with cattle anymore. He, he gave the, uh, the chance to Uncle Tony. So from then on, Uncle Tony looked after Uncle Abe's cattle. And to me, that was a valuable lesson, and that Uncle Abe admitted that I'm not good at working with cattle. And so that, that has helped me sometimes. If, it's okay if I, don't, if I can't do everything. So thank you, Uncle Abe. Thank you, John. We have a good 10 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Huh? Uh, are you, she's going to say something in German. Um, Ich 
Jo, han har en, en, en så jeg holdt Fire Changer. Han er jo nægtig, det er Fire Changer, det kommer den en bris. Jeg siger, så fri vi er det, men jeg giver bare så. Und diese Kenia wird als besonders Seier für Viet Jens und Seier scheinbar die Feier Kenia spielt. John wird mal an, wenn sie Kenia jung hält, in der Abmerkung, ob sie in Schöller merkt, wenn sie die Völker auskommen. In einem... In meiner Brüder John, er befriedet sich mit dem Ökonomen Maria Reiner, in seinem Hotel in Kenia jung, mit dem Charlie. Og så trækker man og stændig på det. Det fordi det ikke er kort, men det er at vi er svært for at have mistet godt at ikke betale over. Og det er en, hvis vi tager en tøj i det her år, hvis vi har Johnny, vi føler, vi trækker den til at lægge en blivelse, og han har tænkt, at det er så skønt, at vi har Johnny spiller, og det er jo spurgt med den. Han har så jeg føler det der. Og bare en, Hei, vi føler sig der, at Lisbeth, Lisbeth Perner, så er for Lisbeth har vi en fyrgøde den juliet. Men så har den ikke kænger, er det ene kænger, så har den fyrgødelighed, for at vi kænger til at være aftel. Og hvad er det, så kan vi ikke fremærkes, adaptet, vi vil sige, at prøve vi, men så har nok en gøde sig en gøde for. En brød, og Peter var der, hei, hei, hvor skal vi alle være alle sig om, men har jeg også ikke haft for øjeblikket på fri, jeg vet ikke nisje bare. Og bare, at jeg kriger henne op, om han var til jeg rådte, eller at jeg sa at han så er smidt over, at jeg ikke kan høre hvor han. Jeg sa at jeg virkelig har for øjeblikket, at jeg ikke har tyst i sig, at jeg var en gang og læst disse tømme stepser, ja. Og han, jo, og han var, Jeg er en af dem, hvor de sagde, at jeg har det til hvert af mig, men jeg har det til hvert af mine lærer, at kommunen er lige, har jeg ikke ejer af noget, der belevet. Og når jeg ikke har det behøvet, har jeg bare blivet Peter Valley geworden, den straat til mig. Og jeg har det lidt, at jeg kan være med, jeg har det ikke med det, så jeg ved, at jeg har det ikke med det, at jeg har det ikke med det, at jeg har det ikke med det, at jeg har det ikke med det. Drei Kinder arbeiten sehr schwer. Er lebt morgen, sei es so. Man ist noch mal hier am Stall und hier, wenn sie das nicht will, sie so morgen sind. So kann ich der Schwur leben morgen. Und dann hier, da hat er die Haare auch den Ende hier für. Keine Pelle ist heute noch. Und gerade die Jungs. Ja, und er fragt dann, das heißt, für viele Kinder kennt sie sich nicht aus. Und bei Bayern schon, da ist es so. Ja, og det andre er fra Blistræn Kære til Tars. Jeg kan fri sig der, men jeg ved nok, at der er Kære, og så kommer der noget Blist, og jeg kan være der her, og det er Kære, og jeg kan vide, at man lader det mærke, at vi... Når vi er en svært at håbe, at vi også var ansvigt op, og jeg sagde også chans, at det er der Kære. Og der er de, så er vi en særlig smakket mærke, så vi har fælde chances. Så vi fylder gerne meget gange, snarere, og så er vi... Men mange vil sige, at det er en unge, så er det en kvinde, så vi måtte gøre det på, at vi kan lide. Men så er det værdigt, at det er en bedre, men det er det mest frustrerende for os. Det er jo ikke en arv på, og det er der var ikke. Så har vi bare det gange til, vi har det alle gange til fred med. Men nøjder, nøjder, så er det fordi, at det er død. Så vi har også, men nøjder vi har en person, hvor de svester, de svester, der man sender nøjder i, så skjer det, hvor de har et fænger i sikret, nøjder sig der ikke videre. Så vi har tøffelæssigt. Men du, vi har en sejr, men du så der nå, han har ikke hørt, hvor de fortalte, men han har interesseret, at de fortalte. Og så er det nok så stor, det så. Ja, dann sind wir bei der Königin Elben und Mädchen. Und sie hat, wie wir das sämtlich, wie wir das ein Team, wie wir die Töpfe schauen, wie wir die Töpfe in der Jugend und wie wir die Tiere aus dem Leck und schauen so, wie wir auf all der Töpfe in Portland kriegen. Wie in allen Leuten, heute dann Double Class. 
and, uh, out and uh, Tony Nathanbeer on Spoken Yarrow, Maine, we're not Luga. But, yeah, and Astor Margaret, the Uxus thoughts, I did it, and the fucking uh, team, what's it? Saya, Saya, Topstand, Amma von Jörg ab, a field, Saya field für die Sonne, and as the sink that is retired, the Sonne, as field has it on the Sonne, and the Kriak, a field, and Gerda, Gerda, I have fun on the field, and I have a hard boy up. So I have a Drei verdammt in drei von Schwestern, von verdammt die Schwester Lehre, eben wie, wie Agenturs in Augen und Dätern, wenn da noch Anlösen anfangen. Das ist meine Story. Thank you, that was uh, very, very interesting. I personally do not remember uh, here, here in Klaus's wedding, uh, and who was the other one at the same time? Yeah, I, I don't remember those weddings, but I do remember Tante Natty and Uncle Tony. I remember Uncle Tony came with that, uh, I think it was a film Dari, uh, for Charles uh, uh, I think that's how it was, right? So I remember he came to our house. I was sitting under Shafat watching the two of you come, and he walked up to me in bed and he said, I come in schmucks to me all the call me. I will never forget that. And me and Ben, uh, we agreed. <laughs> Sorry, I can't just the line up for you. I call it he's a rock and pop here, but I can't say the check. Your line up your line up your on stray rock up a hawk. Say, we are in the market, but this, but this team line up, turning Alvin and I can line up. Line up, actually, how fail she was to do it. So glad he's out in America when we did when we did today. And that would have had you glad to take the tool to make it a Yeah, but they were free to go and go down on either, and over. They had that, but not because of Rosie going back to the road. Okay, thank you. I think at that time when uh, uh, the Tony and Tony Nacky had their wedding, I would have been four and a half years old. So, and the, the other two weddings were when I was four. So I think that was a little too early to remember. I wish I had remembered, but I don't. Okay, I think. Um, is that, is that it for today? I don't know who's, who's is there any announcements to make? Um, we will have a few, we will have some time tomorrow again, tomorrow afternoon. But I will hand it now over to Abe. This bench comes from Morehouse. Uh, uh, from our grandparents. So this bench is from our grandparents. I think it is also the same bench where Carol always had all the pictures. Yeah, little girl. All right. So. Don't take that bench. Yeah. For anybody who wants this bench, it's a very special bench for at least six of us. One of the very famous pictures my dad took and was not credited correctly for in the Mennonite ship post in 1964 or something. Um, the five or six of us girls are sitting on this bench and all of us are here at the reunion. And we would like to have a picture taken on this bench together before it goes home. All right, all six of us, all six of you, you go and sit there and we'll auction the bench. <laughs> hey, there's a little history behind that, that picture taken. When we were sitting up there, lining up to take that picture, actually the, the, the bench tipped over and some of us fell off. All right, all six of you, uh, you sit here and we'll auction off the bench. <laughs> somebody, else, somebody else? Nobody get any more? Remember, you're getting the good work for you. All right, you good at 35? All right, was anybody with 45? 
All right. All right, anybody else with 45? I got 40. Who's going to give the 45? All right. All right, sold. All right. I want the least step you all sit in. This is going to be $20 on this bench. That let the foot have the history behind it. At our transparency house. Who's going to give $20? I'll give 10. All right, I got 10. Who's going to give 20? I got, I got 30. Now I jump to 35. All right, 35? Yeah. 31. I'm not going to go by one again. It's going to be by two minimum. At least a, a two cold. All right. All right, so grand, this also was being done with grandparents. So that means that what we cousins have been doing otherwise is also a history of people loving to do. So no. Uh, there's a lot of people with young, younger kids, so... Alright, I got... I had $30, and who's going to give me $40? I had 30 in the back, give me 40 I got 25 now 30 I got 30 now 35 Who's going to give me 35 Who's going to give me 35 Alright, I got 35 40 40 I got 35 now give me 40 I got 35 give me 40 that you have all the picture and everything, and the cup, and everything. He's gonna give me ten dollars. He's gonna give me ten dollars. Anybody? Anybody? How much? How much is that? No. Yours. 